Today's episode will be filmed at 120 BPM. Yo, what's up? It's Toru. Welcome back to another episode of Producer Head. In the last episode, we spent a good bit of time talking about social media and the potential benefits that exist from using it and also how to not make it you know, the central focus of what you do. So it feels like a good place to pick up from there is sort of some of the challenges that can come up along the way and the resistance that you can experience as you move from somebody who makes work privately to somebody who makes work publicly. So as you make that transition from being like a private to a public creator, I think something that happens is your awareness level of how many other people there are doing something similar to you goes up significantly and naturally then comes the comparison as well. Because in addition to just being aware of the number of people, you're also aware that there are people who are receiving considerable attention for doing similar work. And that kind of comparison that I would consider unproductive when it's unchecked can go beyond just seeing it as the difference between two numbers. And I get it because the first thing that happens when you tap somebody's name is how you see how many followers they have. And if you're just getting started or if you're early in the process, the difference between those two numbers can start to feel like something bigger than just the difference between two numbers. It can start to make you feel like it has something to do with the credibility or lack thereof of somebody's art or whatever it is that they happen to make or produce. And I think comparison is a natural human tendency. So as a result, it may be a fool's errand to try to, to think we can get rid of it. And I think what we can do though is refocus it and recognize it as an ability to help us pursue the things that interest us and experience success, whatever that happens to be for each of us and some fulfillment along the way. How do we do this? I think we can perform a more productive form of comparison if we learn to look at our work more objectively and the work of others more objectively. So instead of comparing ourselves as people and or artists to other people and artists, what we can do is take something that we're working on and compare it to another piece of work that we enjoy. As you listen to that other work that you enjoy, what you can do is sort of deconstruct it and sort of think about it as maybe you're writing the back of a baseball card for that song or you're writing the nutrition facts of that song. What are the instruments? You know, what's the instrumentation like? What is the arrangement like? Maybe what's the structure of it? You know, does it have an intro? Does it have an outro? Is it verse, chorus, verse, chorus? Is there a bridge? Is it none of those things? And you can just start to do that for a number of songs that you like and enjoy. That can help you understand your own set of preferences and can also help you understand in a more objective way, what, what are things that your music does or doesn't contain in comparison to other pieces of music that you enjoy. And that can allow you to then focus your attention on learning to work on developing specific areas of what you do and improving overall. What I will say is as you're performing these productive comparisons, the more specific you're able to be, I think the more helpful it'll be to your process and your evolution as an artist, because you can only work on one thing at a time. And so if you can be really, really specific about one thing that you like in a song and focus on developing that ability, because maybe it's the chord progression, and now you're like, okay, now I'm gonna practice playing minor seven chords all the time. Or now I'm gonna look for samples that have specifically minor seven chords in there. Maybe you'll practice scales, you know? And so I think those kinds of things really help you understand what you like. And if it's structural, then you're like, okay, I'm gonna make sure that my intro works this way, or I'm gonna make sure that my transitions between sections have something like this. Those kinds of things are, you know, I'm getting into the weeds a little bit, but I wanna be sure that I'm kind of giving concrete examples because I think it's helpful being really tangible and, and intentional about what you do to try to see if you can find some places to improve. The other thing that I do want to add that I do think is, is really important is as you do these productive comparisons, you know, respect your own creative perspective, respect your own creative tendencies. You're not trying to win a competition. You know, this isn't the Super Bowl. What we're trying to do is, is connect with other people through our music and connect with ourselves. And so I think ultimately what these kinds of productive comparisons can help us do is remove the things that obstruct us from expressing ourselves more clearly and more honestly in ways that allow us to connect more directly and freely with other people. Remember that regardless of where you are in your particular you know, arc of development, that you're still an artist 
as long as you decide that you are and that nobody else can really give you that or take it away from you. And that the whole point of the productive comparisons is to allow yourself to source new information to help you evolve as an artist. So yeah, a little bit of an aside, but I did just want to call that out and remind you that, you know, like do your thing. This is just some information to help, you know, move you along in the process. So yeah, we'll cut it here for now. And I just want to say thank you for coming through and watching these videos. I will continue to make them in various forms going forward along with all of the music. So appreciate y'all. This has been Toru in a way. So are you. Peace.